In this video, we're going to take a look at the Cobra More hydrofoil torpedo boat and making it remote control. We're going to do some work on the body, make sure it floats, work on the motors and add some features, and then get it out on the water for some testing. The Cobra More was probably one of the best vehicles in the G.I. Joe line. It's just a great design. It looks fast. It looks tough. It's got amazing play features with all the missiles and the depth charges and torpedoes. But maybe we could make it better if it was remote control and had motors in it. And that's exactly what Little G.I. Joe Customs YouTube channel did a couple years ago. And it really inspired me to make an RC More. Now I already had a More, but it was pretty complete and pretty nice. And I didn't want to cut it up. So I went on eBay, I think, and just got this gross kind of like beat up um, More. If you guys are familiar with my channel, you know I like getting broken, kind of gross toys and cleaning them up and fixing them up and modifying them. So this was really good. I found it at a good price and it still had most of the important stuff. So I got out my tools, my Dremel, and the first thing I did was remove the channel that houses the hydrofoil. Now I briefly thought about keeping the hydrofoils and, you know, really getting into like, how do you make a hydrofoil? And, you know, people have done it, as you can see in this video but it adds a ton of complexity and also these boats are very light so that they can rise out of the water. Um, this more I figured was going to be pretty heavy especially if I added figures to it and stuff like that so didn't want to be constrained by that and just figured let's go with the standard hull kind of remove the hydrofoils and keep it simple especially this is the first time I was ever making an RC boat so I was learning as I was going along. You can see the hull is really nice. It's a pretty nice hull. It looks like a real boat hull. It's not like flat on the bottom or something like a lot of toys are. There were some details on the side that um, I'd have to sand off. And obviously I'd have to fill in that giant gaping hole in the center. Here you can see where I started to file down those kind of vents on the side. I just wanted the hull to be smooth and um, yeah, just like really go through the water without any resistance. Here you can see the results of some of my uh, chipping. And then here's the mock-up, you know, just kind of placing the motor, the battery, all the equipment, seeing if it would fit. What's great about doing this boat, as opposed to like some of the smaller vehicles, is there's plenty of room for the electronics and the battery and all the wires and servos. The great thing about these motors is you don't need a rudder. You just kind of steer the, uh, the pipe that shoots out the water, and that's how you... Uh, you steer the boat, which is kind of nice, so a little less complexity. So to fix the, the bottom hull, um, I decided to scan it in. So, you know, I do a lot of 3D modeling, so I figured I'd scan it in and then kind of look at it in 3D and think about printing parts that could fit in and kind of, you know, just just work to uh, to create the, the shape of the hull so, so you wouldn't even know that the hull was there. So having that scan of the hull was really helpful because I was able to model this kind of structural piece. This was designed to hold the, uh, the motor and allow um, the water to be sucked in through the inlet in the bottom and then shot out the back through the, um, the exhaust, you know, which was that steering part I showed earlier. And so here I'm just doing a lot of like test fitting, you know, making sure everything worked, but um, it seemed like it would work really well. You know, I had to drill some holes so I could screw this in and attach it. I wanted to be able to remove the motor if something happened and uh, something went wrong with the, uh, the motor and had to be replaced. Then for the rest of it, I I kind of made those like V-shaped V, v extrusions and 3D printed those. They didn't fit exactly because, you know, my cuts weren't like perfect and it was a curved surface. And then I glued those in and then backed those up with, you know, just kind of plastic inside with super glue. And I just kind of taped it in place to kind of get that shape. And I'm just trying to create sort of a backbone um, for the putty and the bondo that I'm going to end up covering it with eventually. So here is the full kind of layout with all the glue and the plastic pieces, which, you know, is already pretty strong um, and built up. It's just not watertight. And then you can see there, I was just always making sure that I could put on the deck and the other pieces because the hull looks really deep, but a lot of the toy actually sits down inside the hull, as you can see. So, you know, like that motor, there's the um, the parts where the um, the depth charges go and things like that. So... You always have to keep like putting that stuff in and making sure it worked. But so far it looks like everything is working. So I was pretty excited with the progress. All right, so here you can see the finished kind of backbone, the 3D printed parts. And some parts are just, you know, styrene sheets. And then I laid that over with Bondo. And so I put it on pretty thick. You know, Bondo is really good at kind of filling in gaps and, 
you know, sanding down and getting smooth, but it's not very structural. So I decided I wanted to use some some resin, so a two-part resin from Smooth On that I've used with, you know, casting toys and just, you know, making molds of things. And so I knew that was really strong and really tough stuff. So I just mixed some up. And then with the Bondo in, it was watertight. And so I just poured it on the inside. And this is a pretty quick cast kind of resin. So, you know, it'll it'll start to to get hard in like 10 or 15 minutes. So I just mixed it up, poured it in there, and kind of sloshed it around. So this is kind of like if you're familiar with like, I think it's like roto molding, you know, where you'll you'll kind of spin the mold and the, uh, the resin will adhere to the side. So you'll get like a thin kind of shell. I figured I would use this to you know, kind of let the resin go into any gaps, go into all the different parts, and then harden, and it would become this like super strong shell. And that's exactly what happened. So everything that the uh, the resin's clear, but it it um it cures to be like opaque white. And so there it like made a like a solid shell in the bottom. And then here I started to sand down the bondo, knowing that um, behind that was the plastic and the resin. So a lot of sanding with the bondo. A lot of sanding, rebondoing it, you know, to try to get it smooth. But I really wanted the hull to be smooth, to look good, but also to cut through the water really nicely. And so with this, you know, bondo, any kind of putty, you just have to keep sanding it, you know, priming it, looking for the highs, high points and the low points, and just keep sanding and priming, and you know, it'll start to get better and better. So now comes the moment of truth, the tub test. Will it float? You can see the hull's looking pretty good. I mean, it's, you know, all discolored and stuff, but but it looks pretty smooth. It's got a good shape. And look at that. Oh, yes, it floats. And it floats so high, which is great. I was worried, you know, that this wasn't designed to float. Would it, you know, would it float high? Would it float, float low, just barely above the waterline? But it's really high, so that means we can put a lot more weight in it, which is good because there's no battery or, you know, too many figures or, you know, the rest of the body and stuff. All right, so here I've got things kind of, you know, mocked up. Everything's connected, which is pretty simple. You know, it's really just a battery, the receiver, you know, and the receiver comes with your, uh, you know, with your your uh, remote. And then there's the um, speed controller, you know, and that just hooks up to the motor. So, you know, I just decided to stick everything together and give it a test and see what happened. Because I never used one of these, these like, water motor kind of things so give it a try so there's the power button which is covered with plastic because this is a waterproof uh, speed controller which I'm glad I got one you'll see later on why it's good that I got a, a waterproof one and so everything's powered up and there I'm just giving it a little throttle and it moves it was like jumping I mean I was barely giving it any kind of throttle and it just jumps because I mean I guess that's got like no weight the the hull is really it's really nice and solid, but it's really light, you know, especially for that motor. And you can see I got that white, um, you know, resin filling the bottom of it. So I really wasn't worried about any leaks, except maybe through the um, through the back, you know, where the motor was. But you can see it's just like running into the side of the tub there, and it's just shooting that water moccasin around. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of thrust. It's like you can really feel, you know, it, it pushing forward. You can see it throwing the water moccasin around, creating kind of like a little whirlpool kind of thing. But uh, but this is exciting because it means it's going to work. I mean, if this works, you know, I just have to stick the other stuff on it. And there is one more important part. That's the steering. So to steer it, you need a servo, which if you're not familiar, it's like a tiny little motor. And when you turn the wheel, it just like has a little motor that moves a little arm back and forth. And you usually use that to either turn the wheel on your car, or in this case, I'll use that to turn that kind of pipe that's coming out of the back, either left or right, and that'll steer the boat. So what I noticed was to uh, to get a servo, you know, like a little motor in there, I didn't want to use a, a tiny servo. I wanted it to be strong enough, but I need some extra space. So what I'm doing is cutting out the kind of engine bay in the Mori. What's cool is it's got that kind of engine. You could lift the cover off, but yeah, you know, I figured I'd use that space for the servo and just uh you know hide it in there so i made sort of this little stand so the servo could sit upside down over the motor and be in line with the motor and then you could see there as the little arm on the servo goes back and forth it kind of pushes that bar and that pushes the uh the tube and that's how you steer now see that 
hole I had to drill in the side of the boat. I should have done that higher up. It ends up not mattering too much, but you know, anytime you're cutting a hole in the in the hull, do it as high above the water line as possible. I probably could have bent that rod up and then through and then bent it back down and it would have been just a little safer because you can see here's the problem. Now that's not too bad because I actually have a real boat, you know, like a normal person size boat and I have some marine adhesive and marine um, kind of like putty stuff that is really good for um, fixing holes like this. And so I grabbed some of that and put it around the, the hole and it's kind of like not hard. It's almost like flexible, kind of like caulking, but it's like a stronger grade of that. You know, it's pretty expensive, but um, but it keeps the water from going out. And it kind of like, you know, makes a really like tight seal with that rod going through. And so we we don't have to worry about the, uh, the water intrusion. And I think I've got a picture of that, um, the stuff I actually used. Yeah, there it is, the 3M 5200 Marine. I guess like anyone who does anything on boats always uses that. I used it when um, you know, I was installing like a depth finder on my boat and stuff. So here you can see the bottom. It looks pretty good. I could keep sanding it and get it like perfect, but I know it's going to like hit rocks and sand and get a little scratched up, but it looks pretty good. Um, I was pretty excited with how that came out. So all the tests work. So now it's more like aesthetics. So the, um, the servo popped up a little higher than the old, the motor in the original Moray. So I had to create like a motor box that went up higher and hit it. So I looked at the existing motor and the box, tried to create something that would match the aesthetics, you know, some of those angles and stuff. And um, I think it matched really good. I love doing this stuff, kind of like having fun, just making the uh, the pieces. Or you know what, the, the cover might have been lost, I forget, but, um, you know, because I bought this this one cheap off eBay. But I also made um, covers for those, those side panels as well, um, making those look like air inlets. But... I think this is really good you know it matches with the uh the aesthetic it it still looks kind of like the uh the stock moray but allows me to have all that room in there and there you can see the little side panels um you know that i made so we could stop now we've got the working boat but let's keep going we could add a lot more fun and features to this so one thing i always wanted to do was have a way to automate the door the missile door in the front so that it could pop open. So you can see there, all I did was take one, a really tiny servo motor and the arm, when it pushes forward, pushes a, a wire that then kind of pushes the door open. So instead of having to push that plunger down, you just hit something on the remote that activates that servo and it pops up. Now people have said I should put like a Nerf launcher or something in there, maybe someday, but um, I'm just happy with that being able to pop up and go down. It looks really cool when it's when it's out in the water. This next idea I got from Little G.I. Joe's Customs, and it's hiding a servo kind of in like a 3D printed um, like housing, almost like it's part of the dashboard. And when that servo turns, activated by the steering, it rotates the turret in the opposite direction of the steering. So the boat is going in the direction that the turret turns. So... It just looks kind of neat, like whoever's up there is manning the, manning the boat or manning the turret. Looks like they're kind of, you know, like easing into the turn and stuff. So it just adds a little bit more fun. A great idea from little G.I. Joe Customs. Then there's the spotlight, the deck light, that um, everybody's always obsessed with having the, the lens that goes in there. But I figured it'd be fun to actually have it light up. So I put a light kit into this, so there's like lights under the deck. But I thought it'd be neat to... 3D print and design a fatter ones where I could actually like thread a LED up into the light and then that light could be activated remotely. So all it meant was drilling a hole a little bit bigger than the original one so I could get that through and then it just pops on there. You can see pretty good fit and I just styled it and almost you know tried to copy pretty much the uh, the original design. So it's a little bit bigger, but you can see it, it functions just like the old one. And so, you know, someone can just sit there and look like they're manning it. And then because I got this, you know, it's a kind of beaten up moray off of eBay, there were a few missing parts. So I just ended up 3D modeling those because these can be expensive as you add up the price of these. And it's always fun to just kind of make it yourself. And then you can kind of like make more if anything ever goes wrong. So I needed a new, uh, a new gun for the turret and then... 
I actually modified these, um, the torpedoes. I made them a little bit more realistic, I thought. And I think the real ones are hollow on the bottom. So these I just made like full, full around. And then, you know, you can see they fit up and work with the, uh, you know, with the, the toy, the way the original pieces did. They just pop in. And then one of the guns, the supports was broken. I didn't want to remodel that whole thing. So I just had a styrene built that support piece. And then I got some great Tamiya paint that like matches really well. I think it's the rubber black, the TS-82. Um, get that and it it really matches that kind of gray. It's not really black, almost like a gray black. Um, and it, it looks like it's off in these pictures, but when you see it in person, it's, it's a really great match. Um, really happy with how that came. And so getting ready for the sea trials, the total boat came in at three pounds, eight ounces, and it was ready for stickers and to get ready for its final prep for the water. So for the crew, for the maiden voyage, I decided to do something kind of similar to the box art. So I got some dreadnoughts on there and, you know, put an eel on there. I thought that would be, be cool. Um, something you can see here is that I lashed them all together, just used some thread and made some slip knots and tied them together. This came from the advice of Joe Mahler, who's also got a really cool RC channel. Um, you know, just in case the boat flips or anything happens, you won't lose your figures over the side, which, you know, could make a fun day of boating kind of ruin it. So this will hold them in place. And there's a little blue tack just to hold them up to, just to assist with that. So there they are, ready to hit the water. And here we go. It's floating and the motor is pushing them along nicely. So this is in brackish water. It's near, you know, I live near the ocean. So this is off of an inlet. So... It's mostly salt water. You can see there was some water. Water got in. I think it came over the back because, you know, the back sits really low, way lower than I thought it would. And so I think water's coming over the back even just a little bit. And then that weighs down the back and then it sinks a little bit more. I wasn't too worried about it though. You know, just made sure it didn't go too far away. There were also a lot of swells. You know, a lot of boats are passing by here and they're kicking up little waves or swells. You know, and those are coming into the into the shore and kind of breaking like little waves but look at it go it's like kind of riding the waves and shooting along this is just beautiful like seeing the moray cruising around with some little figures on it you know them like looking like they're blasting and shooting and stuff but then it got into this death spiral so the back um control like hinge that was doing the steering it um it broke so it just started doing a spiral luckily it didn't like point out to see and you know just keep going so I repaired that, made it like really strong, and that's when I added that kind of flexible rubber boot over the back there. But how fun, what a total success, it worked. So I then took it on a camping trip, so I was excited about this because there's a river there where people fish, and it's not too deep, and it's fresh water, so uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, doing as much damage to the electronics or, you know, like pieces wearing out. You can see the steering there, the turrets moving um, ever so slightly every time I turn, which is great. And um, the lights are working, the missile uh, door is popping open, and it's just amazing seeing like a moray out on the water under its own power, you know, just cruising around. I mean, it looks like a scene out of, you know, out of, out of the cartoon or comic book or something like that. You know, I've talked about, I've actually got like a, a, uh, a whale, so I'm thinking of like um, making that RC. I just need some time, but... But this just looks looks so cool cruising around and stuff. So much fun. Um, this is neat too because there's all these rocks and things like that. So you kind of like um, shooting around between those. And you know, you figure this is like near a swamp maybe where the, uh, the dreadnoughts are hanging out. And so this is more when the sun started going down. You can see the lights. So there's like bluish lights in the engine bay. And then it's like a clear um, white light in the, uh, the spotlight. So you can see that turning on. And there you can see the turret turning as I turn the vehicle. And you can see some of the, the blue glow. And so here, we'll bring it in towards the camera. And you can see I can switch the, uh, the lights on and off, which is really neat using the remote control. There's the turret, see it moving side to side. And it gets pretty bright. Um, there you can see the, the bluish glow kind of like inside. I was thinking there was like, you know, the engines or power supplies or whatever. And then the lights go off. But here it's getting darker. So you can see some of the red lights in the back. And that big uh, spotlight kind of glow in there. 
So this is the next day, and I'm getting kind of like cocky with this thing. I mean, it's pretty good, so I decided to take it out in the river. But you can see it's really fighting the current. It looked like it was, you know, kind of breaking even with the current, um, not really making any headway. So I also hit a couple rocks, so I decided to bring it back. And it was bumping around, and there was some water getting in the back. And so I was like full throttle bringing it back. It, but the back was looking so low, and it was getting lower and lower. There's some fishermen. And then I went to it. And it was totally submerged. Oh man, I was like, oh no, what did I do? But remember, I did get that that uh, waterproof um, speed controller. But there, did you see the turret like spazzing out? I think that got some water in it and it kind of messed it up for a while. But after it dried out, it was fine. So, uh, so luckily too, it wasn't salt water because that could corrode things and might like mess things up. But yeah, you can see the turret's not moving when I'm steering. Um, I should probably turn the power off and just take it out, but I let it dry off a little bit. And then this other guy at the campsite had a little re RC boat and, um, kind of like a Vietnam, like fast boat. And so we were just like cruising around together. His was a lot faster and it made me kind of wish I'd put more power in this. I wanted to make this scale. So, you know, it wouldn't be like a speed boat racing around, but when I see him like hitting waves and like jumping and having fun with it, I'm kind of like, yeah, I could have put a little more power in that. So maybe next time. But all in all, I'm just like super excited and happy with how this came out. So I think I'll end it with this. I had the the honor of showing the RC Moray to Ron Rudat. I went to a convention. I knew he was going to be there. So I packed it up in some of my other customs. But I really wanted to show him the RC Moray because he's the designer of the Moray. So got to show him the functions. Um he was like videoing um, me walking through the functions, which was really cool. Like I was just excited that he was interested enough in this to, you know, want to record it and have something for himself. But, you know, just showed him, you know, what I'd done to the design. And, you know, it was great. We got to talk about him actually designing it. And he showed me some little Easter eggs, like how, you know, his initials are on the vehicle, you know, which is something like a lot of the designers did. And that in the front, you know, some of the detail they put into the model, you know, it's like a 50 caliber uh, machine gun, just like in the kind of like greeblies of the front, just like hidden in there and you wouldn't even know it. So he's just kind of pointing out some stuff and, you know, we're talking about things and he was telling me about how like, he, uh, you know, he was a huge fan of like model making and just, you know, like building model kits and how much that influenced him and stuff like that. And so this is just really cool. Um, yeah, so I'll just end it there. It's been really fun making this an RC vehicle. Um, I just wanted to document the process and show you guys everything I went through to get it to uh, to make it RC. And, you know, maybe it inspired one of you guys to, to give it a try. Um, again, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you in the next one. And as always, yo Joe.